Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by induced potential and the generator effect. You should then be able to describe the factors that affect the size and direction of the induced potential. And this is for triple physics students higher tier only. Ok I'm showing you here a wire which is below a magnetic field. If we move the wire up through the magnetic field like this, then a potential difference is induced across the ends of the wire. However, when the wire stops moving, then the potential difference is lost. If we move the wire back down through the magnetic field, then we get the potential difference again. However, you'll notice that the potential difference has now reversed direction. Scientists call this potential difference the induced potential. Now if we have a complete circuit, then we induce a current. This is called the generator effect. Remember that the direction of the current switches when the direction of movement switches. And if the movement stops, then the current also stops. We also get an induced potential and an induced current if we keep the wire still, but move the magnetic field like this. There is one key point here. We only see the generator effect if the wire passes through the magnetic field. If the wire moves along the magnetic field like this, then we do not get an induced potential difference or current. Now the size of the induced potential difference, or the induced current, depends on three factors. The induced potential difference and current are larger if we use a stronger magnetic field, if we move the wire more rapidly, and if we shape the wire into a coil. The greater the number of turns on the coil, then the greater the induced potential difference and current. In this case, I'm showing you a magnet moving in and out of a coil of wire. And as you can see, this also produces an induced current. Again, you can see that the direction of the current changes when the direction of movement changes, just as we saw before. We can also switch the direction of the induced current if we switch the poles of the magnet like this. Ok, there's one final area that we need to look at, and this is a bit more tricky. As we've seen, when we move a magnet into a coil of wire, a current is induced in the wire. Now the key fact is that this induced current creates its own magnetic field. And this magnetic field opposes the movement of the magnet. So when we insert the north pole into the coil, that end of the coil also becomes a north pole. This repels the magnet, making it harder to push the magnet in. And when we pull the north pole out, that end of the coil becomes a south pole. This attracts the magnet, making it harder to pull it out. So because the induced current makes it harder to move the magnet, this means that we're doing work. In other words, we're transferring energy from the movement of the magnet into the movement of the current. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on the generator effect in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. 